and welcome to the first edition of Applied AG Exchange Professional Higher Education. My name is Mandy Mok, okay. founder and CEO of Applied AG. Applied AG is the new kid on the block as an international higher education service provider that specializes in evaluation, branding, and professional networking solutions. This Applied AG Exchange webinar is a special initiative to bridge the divide between skills-based and general higher education, a trend which we have dubbed professional higher education or professional HE. Until quite recently, you had one world of higher education that sat in the ivory towers, doing groundbreaking research and educating only the elites. Where, and then in another universe, there were the practical training courses, polytechnics, TVETs, technical colleges, whatever you want to call it. At Applied HE, we want the best of both worlds. Professional HE embraces the focus on industry and learning from skills-based tradition while adopting groundbreaking new technologies. To us, this is the future of higher education. The Applied HE Exchange Professional Higher Education is one step in this direction. The other is our new Applied HE Job Ready Rating System, which is a unique evaluation tool that is suitable for the entire spectrum of the higher education sector, from humble polytechnics to the institutions at the top of the university ranking tables. I will tell you a little more about the Applied HE Job Ready Rating right after this webinar. The digitization of skills-based education is one of the great challenges of the professional higher education sector. And it is a challenge that has become extremely urgent with the current shift towards online teaching and learning. Today's webinar focuses on the policy perspective of digitization in skills-based education. Chairing today's webinar is Mrs. Winnie Ely, partner of Education Insights UK. She will introduce our panel of speakers to you shortly. We're very grateful that all of you were able to find the time to join us for today's webinar. So without further ado, allow me to hand over to Winnie. Thanks, Mandy. Hello and welcome to Apply HE Exchange. Professional Higher Education is a special webinar that explores the challenges facing skills-based higher education. Today we explored from a policy perspective, digitization of skills-based education, threats, delusion or panacea. With us today is an esteemed global and heavyweight expert panel. I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Corrado E. Inigo, Chairman of the Philippines Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation in Philippines. Let's listen to Dr. Corrado E. Inigo for three minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, we are experiencing now heavy thunderstorm with no power, and I'm using a different uh, landline. So I can start. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am chairing the uh, PACOCOA, the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation, or PACOCOA. It was incorporated as a non stock corporation, and after 48 years, it is now recognized the number one accrediting agency in the Philippines with the highest number of accredited programs. PACOCOA has grown into a robust organization and has served the basic, tertiary, and graduate levels in its role of promoting excellence in the private sector. Eventually, the agency is going to serve also the technical, vocational, technical sector a sector which has not been covered by the quality assurance scope of other private quality assurance accrediting agencies in the country. PACOCOA accreditation standard is aligned with the local and international quality assurance standards. For two years, our focus has been toward internationalizing accreditation standards and digitizing our accreditation process. Amid the COVID-19, PACOCOA initiated the conversion of all our survey instruments to electronic or digitized outcomes-based accreditation. And now the agency is adopting 
the remote virtual accreditation. Operating for more than 48 years, it's founding in 1973. It is in the context of enabling PACOCOA to serve the technical vocational sector and complete its continuous quality improvement reach to cover the eight levels of our national qualifications framework or the PQF. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, our intention is, is, is to extend our continuous quality improvement service through accreditation of technical vocational program in partnership with one of the national education departments, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA. It serves as the Philippines Technical Vocational Education and Training Authority. And as a government agency, TESDA is tasked uh, to manage and supervise the Philippines technical education and skills development. And its goals are to develop the Filipino workforce with world-class competence and positive work values, and to provide quality technical, educational, and skills development through its direction, policies, and programs. In a matter of weeks, in almost seven months, coronavirus COVID-19 has changed the world of work and the sphere of learning and development. It has challenged individuals, employers, and workers to adapt to online modalities in all aspects of life. Most of these resources are open access. The TESDA online program is the latest free service and no tuition fee training that the tech book institution is offering exclusively for Filipino citizens. With the help of the internet, it will make the skills development and technical education a lot more accessible to Filipinos. The advantage for, for students uh, who would take up these TESDA online courses is that they will have the luxury to study the selected courses in their free time, provided they own a cell phone, laptop, desktop, computer, and internet. They can study anywhere and even in the comfort of their home. Currently, the Philippines has limited policy focus on digital TV. and in skills development. Digital innovation is taking place at the institutional level, such through the use of technology, essential prerequisites for such institutional innovation include institutional management to cope up with the technological developments, improvement of such as electricity, broadband and equipment, and transforming an institution through a culture of innovation, through partnership with industry to respond to demands for digitization. Looking forward, lead to truly strengthening, internationalizing, and digitizing the PACOCOA standards in all levels of education. from tech book up to the graduate program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Corrado. Uh, despite all the challenges with the connectivity, you have done yes. wonderfully and also rise up to the oh. challenge of digitization. So thank you yes. very much. I'm sure thank the you. audience will have and questions. Uh, um, at last, at last. I definitely have <laughs> mine. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you. Speaking next is Professor Dr. Raha Abdul Rahim, Vice Chancellor of University Technical Malaysia, Malacca in Malaysia. Professor Dr. Raha Abdul Rahim, the stage is all yours in the next three minutes. Hello, Winnie and everybody. Good evening. It is 9 p.m. here in Malaysia, as also in, uh, in Singapore, I would think. Um, I will just uh, share a little bit about um, the Malaysian uh, Higher Education Blueprint that was developed for 2015-2025. Um, we were lucky in the sense that when the Malaysian Higher Education Blueprint was developed, uh, that consists of 10 shifts. And within those shifts, there are two very important ones that, is very much, that are very much related to what we're talking about today. Uh, for shift number four, which is quality TVET graduates, and uh, shift number nine, 
that is globalized online learning. So when you think about um, what has been uh, put into the thoughts of uh, coming up with those two shifts, um, the first is uh, the initiatives that would lead into qualitative ed graduates. Um, one is to have industry-led curriculum. Second, to increase quality of teachers, lecturers, and program delivery. Uh, and for globalized online learning, some of the initiatives include increase of access to quality education, formulations, and global community. Uh, the second would be efficient cost delivery and also a decreased need for physical space. The target was that by 2020, at least 50% of the courses uh, in the, offered by the higher institution of uh, learning in Malaysia and perhaps around the world, at least 50% would be online or digitalized. Now, lo and behold, COVID came around. <laughs> and I think for all, all of us, it was uh, such a big surprise that we have to do it now instead of waiting for 2025. So in a way, uh, in a way, most of Malaysia's 20 public universities and more than 400 private uh, institutions had been encouraged to mandate online learning using live streaming on Facebook or YouTube uh, lightboard video technology, Zoom, or in-house e-learning platforms. However, this approach can be viewed as fragmented approach to achieving higher education, learning, and teaching quality. Many strategies were also put in place to fulfill uh, shift number nine, that is globalized online learning. For example, to have ICT-enabled learning, where greater personalization of learning experience and increased interactivity should be put in place. Blended learning modules, whereby integrated ICT enabled learning is blended with face to face instructions. And number three, online learning or a MOOC. So there are many, um, well, as recently as August 2020, the government actually put in a national digital network policy uh, that is whereby a digital infrastructure plan for transition. Uh, to 5G technology. So that's how, you know, how the government actually uh, respond to the needs of the country at the moment. Uh, we also had a national e-learning policy in Malaysia since 2011 to enhance our provision of a quality e-learning framework to be enhanced in 2015. Now, what, what uh, as universities, I think the, 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 the most challenge, the, the biggest challenge that we face would be to see how uh, the preparation of materials uh, by the teachers and lecturers. Actually, I think there are a few things here. For our students, these are mostly Gen Z. And for Gen Z students, they embrace personal devices. They, they conduct, you know, they, they publish assignments digitally. They are uh, digital natives, if we may call them that. So for them to embrace the technology, I think um, we do not find it difficult. The challenges would be for the teachers and lecturers uh, who are mostly from the well, baby boomers, such as myself, perhaps we are already facing out, but there will be the younger ones um, who are actually also, um, they are not digital natives, but they're also very comfortable with technology. So I do not see a lot of uh, uh, difficulties in embracing uh, digitalization of higher education. However, we need to make sure that there is an adaptation of apps. There must be also a, a move into virtual reality, perhaps, especially this is especially for the skilled um, based education uh, where the TVETs are mostly um, are involved in. Um, maybe augmented reality and also simulations. Now, the challenge should be the network's availability. So the availability of networks to different parts of the country. Um, I think this is also a challenge for everyone in the different parts of the world. Even if you're staying in big towns, when you're in a taller building and you're in a lower, smaller building, there's also a challenge of getting networks. So what more if you're living um, in the suburbs or outskirts of town? Um, and also the acceptance, that means adoption, the adaptation. Uh, so these are the challenges I feel, but it is also opportunity. Uh, so in this case, uh, for Malaysia, basically the government has put in place some policies 
the institutions are actually trying to adapt and adopt and also embrace uh, whatever technology or whatever policies that have been put in. And um, well, we hope that there will be, um, you know, uh, uh, and actually a mesh or a merge of ideas and, uh, and, 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 uh, and also um, visions from both sides, the students as well as the lecturers. So that's, that's my three minutes, I think. Winnie? <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Raha. Thank you. Um, quite a lot of ambition there. And like you said, the acceleration because of COVID means uh, we have to do it. So yeah. again, big topic that we're going to discuss a bit more later on. Uh, thank you. Our okay. next speaker is Dr. Janaka Jayela. I hope I pronounce it right. De Deputy Director General and Acting Director General of the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission in Sri Lanka. Dr. Janaka Jayela, the next three minutes is all yours. Thank you, Vinnie. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, telling uh, uh, about the topic and uh, the situation of uh, Sri Lanka. Actually, I represent, as you said, uh, TVEC, the, the Quality Assurance and Regulatory Body for Tibet in Sri Lanka. And uh, in Sri Lanka, we have uh, faced this uh, COVID situation when we, in, in uh, April, and uh, uh, and we experienced a lot of difficulties uh, in that uh, time. But as a policy, we asked our training centers to uh, actually deliver the lessons uh, through online uh, and other medias using different uh, electronic media. And uh, after we analyzed the situation, we got uh, reports time time, and we have seen that 50% uh, of the students got a chance to uh, uh, actually participate uh, in the lessons. And uh, that was a quite good achievement in comparing to the, the other resource and uh, because uh, of the digital divide, especially in rural and uh, urban areas. And uh, we saw this remarkable achievement, uh, at least 50% got uh, this opportunity to uh, go for uh, digital digitalization. Uh, and uh, we have uh, seen a lot of uh, other initiatives of digital uh, use of digital applications to uh, go on uh, with uh, skills-based education because Earlier, people thought that uh, we cannot do skill-based education through digital uh, media. But uh, now that uh, perception uh, have been changing, perceptions have been changing because uh, we can use a lot of uh, simulation, simulation of software and a lot of uh, resources in the internet. And uh, uh, we can use uh, other social media networks to deliver and uh, use that kind of uh, digitized, digitized contents and other learning materials. And uh, for that, I would, I would say the most important thing is how we are going to innovate the, the things with the technology in the teaching learning process and new uh, pedagogical skills. And uh, also we need the, the teaching uh, uh, teachers capabilities and teaching new skills and uh, also uh, the society need to accept and the, the employers and uh, other uh, the, the job seekers or the, the students need to accept uh, what digital content offers and uh, there need to be social acceptance of the idea of uh, digital education, uh, especially skills-based education, because traditionally we have been delivering in, in physically and in, in labs or the practical situations. And also I see a lot of, as I said, a lot of trends and uh, it needs to be uh, like generalized or we have to do it uh, in mass scale and uh, to target into different uh, niche areas. So we can use uh, the technological 
developments in this area that uh, capable of uh, delivering the content in reliable and uh, uh, socially accepted manner because we need to see every time the social acceptance of these uh, skill based courses and we can use a lot of uh, tools like uh, gamification to motivate students in in uh, this skill based education uh, which uh, a part of my research uh, recently and uh, there are a lot of enthusiasm uh, in in the, within the students and the teachers uh, actually i uh, i make uh, this kind of opportunity uh, because the covid has given this opportunity to jump into the the digitization of the, the contents and other uh, e-learning and uh, blended learning. Uh, this is a very good opportunity, I would say. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Janata Jayema. Um, social acceptance, gamification, and also your research. I think that will be, you know, uh, key topics that we'll explore a bit later on together. So thank you. Last but not least, um, Dr. Shayama Majanda, former head of the UNESCO at Univoke International Center for Technical and Vocational Education and Training. Dr. Shayama Majanda, your three minutes starts now. Thank you, Winnie, for, for your kind introduction. Good evening to all. I think I thought I will speak 30 minutes, not three minutes. <laughs> so, so I prepared 30 minutes. Let's try it within three minutes. I can close it. I hope you will all agree with me with one thing. Higher education is under pressure. Whether you are in Singapore, in Malaysia, or in Papua New Guinea, or India, or anywhere in Europe, they are under pressure. The simple reason is there is a growing unemployment of university graduates, unthinkable proportion. And therefore, all the universities worldwide is realizing there is an urgent need to integrate skill-based education in higher education. Because without work, without job, education for education's sake, that's liberty university cannot offer. So therefore, to integrate work-based learning, which is primarily prepares learner for the world of work, not just academic education, is the call of the day. What is the method that has been used for skill-based training? Work-based learning, dual study system. I was in 10 years in Germany. I just came back uh, this uh, you know, last, after the COVID, I think in March. And you know, dual study system is university graduate is going to the industry and have a dual study system, industry and university approach. OGT on the job training, dual training in different forms. And there are a lot of varieties are coming by which learners are preparing for the world of work. So therefore in UNESCO Univoc, I find a, a sentence like this, if education is the key for development, skill is the master key to unlock unemployment and poverty. Without skill, whatever brilliant you are, you need a little bit researchers, I agree, but massification of university is for skill-based university. Now I will take another topic. On the other hand, if you see digitization changing the society, the way we work, we live, we socialize. I never thought I will address you like this way. So this is the way we are adopting new normals, what we are talking about. So therefore, how we learn also change by using digital. The key advantage of all this work, what is the key advantage of digitization? I think there are three. One, it increases access and flexibility, which is called anytime, anywhere, anyhow learning. So this is a like MOOCs, massive online courses are coming. Your access has been increased. You can go for flexibility at any point of time you can access. So that's one, we all know about that. We talk less about the quality. Digitization has improved the quality of learning outcome. 
I don't agree with those people, those shows PDF file and PowerPoint in on, on the computer and tell us this is online learning. This is rubbish for me. This is actually a bad quality of uh, online learning demonstration. When you say quality of learning, you need to have a multimedia, virtual reality, adaptive learning, engaging. I will come one by one in my deliberation more when uh, in the interaction. That is the you know uh, main thing. So what does it mean? It means that digitization or skill-based learning is definitely will improve the relevance of the learning also. But some of the key questions, if the three minutes is almost I'm near, I want to raise in this platform. Number one, all that glitters is not the goal. Is it possible to digitize hands-on training? If so, how? Tell me. I have some solution. Like uh, my madam has said that this is blended learning. We need to have to talk much more how to digitize skill, hands-on skill. Second question, why there is a huge dropout in online learning worldwide? This is not in one country. There's a huge dropout. It starts with funfair, but nobody knows that almost, you know, more than 50% dropout. Quality of teaching is very poor. So what is the solution? Do you have any solution to that? So it is not panacea for all. So that's something we have to work out. The third question I'm raising, what are the critical factor of digitization to be successful? Is it only content or more than that? I like to stop here and I want to share the experience after that. Thank you. Excellent timing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chiyama. Um, Machanda, you prepared 30 minutes and you managed to do it exactly in the three minutes. Fantastic. Um, I learned one thing. Skill is the master key, right? <laughs> we'll find out more in a minute. Um, before we open the interaction between all the speakers and delegates, I'm going to open the floor between our speakers. If you have any comments or a question that you might ask your fellow speaker before we start to interact with our delegates. Maybe just a thought, Vinny? Yes, I, please, yes. Yeah, um, very interestingly, um, Shama just now said about um, a huge dropout in online learning, more than 50%. Uh, here we are just trying to get 50% up on, le on online learning in our universities. So share with us your thoughts. Uh, perhaps is it because of the, uh, the, the unreadiness maybe of the lecturers or the teachers to actually go on online learning? Would that be a, one of the reason as to why sometimes it doesn't become as exciting as we hope it would be for the students? As we know, most of the students are of the Z gen, where they are probably, they are born with handphones in hand, you know, and they are more tax heavy than the lecturers or the teachers. <laughs> so would that, would that be a reason? Because as a lecturer myself, <clears throat> I'm also trying to figure out how to make online learning uh, be more excitable, uh, be something that uh, our lecturers would want to embrace totally and, uh, for, and, and as a means on how we can teach skill-based education. Uh, that would be the biggest challenge, I would think. But what are your thoughts? Thank you very much uh, for a wonderful question. So I think, uh, why these dropouts? There is no, not a single reason for that. There's a three major reasons behind it. One, to be a good online courses, you need three things, not one thing. First, you need to have a very good content. Second, you need a very good administrative support. Third, you need very good student support. Most of the time, system fails because lack of good content, lack of administrative support, lack of student support. Let me clarify this. When you say good content means it should be interactive, number one. It should be engaging. It should be visual. It uses a lot of multimedia. 
even face to face learning sometime could not able to could not able to achieve so that is online learning this is a different ball game this is not the same ball game that you just transfer classroom to the online learning you have to be the expert in the online learning to content deliver so what is the bottleneck teacher training teachers are not prepared for that so they need to be fully aware about this second issue administrative support you are very good in teachers very good content but you have a lack of administrative support you have no good connectivity management of the students you know support is not done evaluation is not proper so you are bound to fail the third is the student support student finds lot of difficulty during the course of an online courses how we are mitigating that what is the counseling what is the you know mentoring the way we are doing what is the student support we are providing if you have not satisfying the three i think drop out is inevitable and you know that's why i say all that glitters is not gold we start with very good minister came inaugurated a program everything happened nobody going to see what is the final you know retention and the quality of the learning outcome so we need to be very very doubly you know sure to make it quality of learning quality of support administrative uh, support and the student support thank you well said thank you um given all of your accumulated experiences over 100 years i basically read your bios and you know more than 100 years here in the room I wonder if you have a magic formula for improving quality of teaching through digitization. Cuz I think you mentioned teacher training is a particular bottleneck. Have you found a magic formula to train teachers? Okay. Hey. can i say a few words or if any other panelist want to do i don't want to speak more so janaka you like to do it or i like uh, adding few words then you can uh, speak more <laughs> actually uh, the, there is no magic formula uh, so it's uh, you know the capacity building of uh, teacher skills is uh, is the major bottleneck also we are facing right now uh, digital skills of the uh, teachers uh, is depend on because they are most of them are not the current age uh, age people because they are little old and uh, they find it difficult to adapt some of the digital skills in in and uh, social media and other because we need to bring lot of different tools together not uh, just putting pdf and uh, telling it is the online learning so there should be some interactive component as uh, professor majundar mentioned there should be a lot of support uh, we have to give uh, in this uh, and uh, we we lack this uh, because of uh, low skills in the teachers and we need to bring lot of uh, skills and uh, we need to do some uh, tot training of trainers in digital skills as i understand how do you say yeah i agree janaka actually you have said rightly we we made a study in unesco bangkok uh, one time in asia pacific region about the quality of you know uh, online courses and what is the reason we found a very interesting observation we have two type of teachers one teachers are very sound very good in the classroom they know pedagogy they know how to teach they know what are the tools and technique and you will be amazed to see by just case study and storytelling they will be mesmerized the students and you will see what a beautiful teacher that is what this is one group what is the shortcoming of this group they are they are not aware about digital tools technique rather they are afraid because they are all senior teacher they are good management likes this the smart people who is the smart people those who are it graduate recently joined in the institution doesn't know about pedagogy they only know the tools oh multimedia animation performance evaluation so modeling simulation virtual reality you don't know this you can connect this way like this 
education become a magic. None of them are addressing properly the quality. What we need a marriage. The marriage is a good technology need a good pedagogical foundation. You cannot ignore the good teacher. That is necessary. As a teacher, because as a profession, I'm a teacher. 35 years, I was in National Institute of Technical Teachers in India. I observed, I feel very handicapped in the classroom when I have to say assembly language programming without going interior of microprocessor register and others. Later on, when I teach, I use animation, simulation to describe the student on their own, they have learned. I say, what a beautiful world. It's so easy now. I can dissect a machine. I can make the whole thing very clearly. So we need to appreciate that. And we have to capacitate those senior teachers. For the native, the, those who are young teachers, we have to advise them. Yeah, you are very smart. You know all this technology very well. But where is the pedagogy? You don't know how to teach. Do you know what is eye contact? How to draw the attention of the learner? Have you been done that? So how you are you using the technology for the learning outcome? They will just mesmerize and oh, we don't know. Nobody has told us. So we need two types of training. One, those who are technologically down, we need to have pedagogically because pedagogy technology integration is the answer. It is not ones and others. Thank you. Very interesting. I think you raised some pedagogical um, key issues. And one of the things that I have uh, in mind is how do you build rapport through a screen? So that you might have research that can back us up, but uh, I'm going to turn the, um, the microphone for the delegates to come in to ask you questions. And um, I'm just going to... Test my technology skill. Right. Um, so for our delegates, if you wish to speak, please could you raise your hands and I'll unmute your microphone. Am I seeing hands? Not yet. Don't be shy. While we're waiting for hands to be, oh, I can see one quickly go to there. So we have Fergus, Jahan. Yeah, hello. How are you? Uh, <clears throat> I just want to uh, share my experience. Uh, uh, I'm head of the Department of Family Medicine at uh, <clears throat> National University. Uh, College of um, Medicine and Health Sciences in Oman. Uh, I have a very um, unique experience here at Medical College. Uh, you know, doctors cannot be uh, a, a community doctor until and I have skills. Uh, you can you can produce engineers and other computer sciences online, but you cannot produce doctors online. So uh, we really used a great challenge regarding this uh, skills uh, master key. So uh, we have done uh, yeah, pedagogy, uh, integration of uh, your uh, uh, teachers' uh, skills and the students' interaction and in students' engagement. They're all uh, important necessary uh, um, uh, key factors. Uh, students here in Oman, they are very helpful and supportive to us. This, this factor, I think, uh, I, I admire. Uh, the next thing is that we have a very good IT support uh, from the administration. Now, the teacher's training really, really is a, is a challenge. But uh, we have uh, all experienced uh, teachers and teachers, young teachers. Uh, they all are very supportive and they, they come forward and they say that we want to learn. And it's not uh, unilateral, it is a bilateral thing. Now, yesterday I had an online session on case-based learning uh, or uh, journal practice uh, cases. And all of a sudden my camera, my camera just, you know, uh, it was not working. 
so these technology uh, they have their own uh, benefits advantages and disadvantages so we have to be we have to prepare ourselves and we have to uh, make some alternatives uh, regarding that so immediately the students said don't ma'am don't worry it's not your fault uh, just fix it and we'll you know we'll join uh, again so i think uh, it's it's going on so far because we have just started our new curriculum year uh, from uh, 7th of september this year and uh, hopefully we are going to have true learning again in january so we are giving them all opportunities to do group discussions off screen discussions come back the assignments and these are really helping them but uh, remember the med medicine uh, education medical education is not complete until and unless they touch a patient and they communicate with the patient or they do some uh, you know hands on training uh, in the in the in the practice so for that uh, we are asking uh, we have two two uh, phases of our teaching and learning in the first phase what they are doing they are doing online learning and uh, in the second phase uh, from the january uh, third week they will come back and uh, hopefully hopefully inshallah we are going to take them to the community health centers and the hospitals uh, if uh, everything is all right uh, but with some um, you know uh, problems and some uh, limitation it is going on well and i'm very hopeful it is not an alternative at all but because of there's no other solution uh, why don't we do it uh according to our expertise according to you know with some help and uh, maybe maybe uh, you can help me i can help you uh, all of you and uh, we can have uh, some you know uh, mutual understandings and uh, collaboration to help each other and uh, hopefully hopefully and i'm very uh, uh, optimistic that uh, inshallah because every time uh, after every session and after every week we have a feedback session thank you very so much for this i think that's very very um interesting to hear and also very encouraging that this is something that's going on so thank you very much for sharing that with us uh so it's from oman that this actually is very good example um looking to the audience again uh, while we're waiting i do have a question on building rapport something as basic as that before you get into the skills based and how then do you actually practice cuz skills based education needs practice um i'm asking this to this wonderful panel are there anything that actually you are doing that actually is about building rapport effectively through digitization and then from a skill based perspective how then do you make sure that practice is done uh while we at the moment is slightly confined and limited so janaka or i will i will try i yeah, uh, can go on sir <laughs> actually you know when you say skill based training basically skill based training is the hands on training where the hands on training starts one in the workshop in the school another in the real workplace there are two places where you have the hands on skill in the workshop you are, you are it is your home you know that the situation you have you have instructors you have the you know those who trainers those who will give the workshop training and others this is quite easy but that is not real the real one is the workplace you have to send them and they have to train in germany which is called dual training now in the, in the terms of university it will be dual study system like they are offering like festo is offering some kind of certificate programs or the you know the automobile other companies are offering some kind of programs and you are getting a dual you know certificate or degree like that so that's the hands on is coming up where is the digital will play you will be surprised to know i was working with one bibb in germany very interesting you know one of the problem is when you send somebody in the company you think that you have solved the problem actually you have not solved the problem 
Do you have any idea what they are doing in the company? In most of the cases, they are not doing proper, you know, learning outcome. They are doing rudimentary jobs. Sometimes they are being misused in the developing countries and they are not learning. They are being, their, their only skill has been exploited. But do you have, you have no data. But when you look at Germany, Austria, Switzerland, those who have experimented, this is basically a teamwork. There is a coordinator in the company, company, there is a coordinator in the school. They have to sit together. They have to come jointly what should be the learning outcome. And every day they have to write a log what is happening. Now writing a log, if you don't digitize it, it is impossible. So they have a digital log where students will write, trainer will write, teacher will write, and every day they will evaluate that. That is called true use of digitization to improve the quality of the learning and rapport between trainer, instructor, and the learner in a real time. So that's the real fantastic use of digitizations and they are experimenting this one in a big way. Excellent. Um, I think we have time um, before we close to invite each of our speaker to give that final word in one minute. This time is one minute. Uh, I can't quite see Dr. Corrado yet. So uh, in the order of reverse order. So uh, in terms of reverse order of you speak, uh, one minute each if our speaker would take the floor now. So Dr. Shama, Shayama, you go first, and then is Dr. Janaka, and then is um, Prof. Dr. Raha. Yeah. And then we'll see if um, if Dr. Karada will come back to join us because of the um, connectivity. One minute each. My final three, word. Yeah, my final word is three. First, te good teachers is a good teachers with or without technology. With technology, they make it super, but good teachers is a good teacher. So we should not be too much technology dependent solution. We have to use technology for betterment of the learning outcome. And we have put teachers in command. That is technology, pedagogy, integration. Number two, 100% online course for, blend, uh, for skill based education is a utopian concept because knowledge, effective domain, all are okay, but psychomotor skill cannot be transferred online. You can facilitate, you can improve the quality, like Boeing is giving training on Boeing 7737 without, you know, you are really uh, going to the final stage. They are all prepared before. This can facilitate time, improve the quality. So that's the second point. It should be blended learning and we have to honor on that. The third issue is online learning is a teamwork. It is not in individual. Like Oman has rightly said, because if you don't take ownership with the teachers as a team, with IT people and others, because it is a teamwork, you cannot do online education alone. And that's give you a collaborative learning inside the you know, university that we have to do. And the fourth final word, and that is the last, without private sector, you can't able to achieve any skill-based training in a proper form. Beautifully done. One minute, that, the challenge is on. <laughs> Pressure is on at the moment for the rest of our speakers. Okay. Uh, shall I go now? Yes, please, Dr. Chen. Yeah. Actually, uh, give you, uh, because I work for the quality assurance and policy making body, so I can give some examples of how we have digitized our platforms in, in quality assurance. So one is uh, we have uh, transformed our paper-based uh, quality assurance system to digital platform-wise uh, systems, like online uh, registration, online accreditation, and uh, we have come up with uh, e-learning course registration uh, criteria 
and uh, blended learning course registration criteria and online uh, knowledge assessment uh, test with item banking and uh, uh, assessor automation system with uh, randomized assessor selection system. There are a lot of uh, things we have uh, introduced with uh, the digital uh, transformation as so also we have uh, come up with online career guidance uh, tool to make a career guidance a wider accessible option to students. And uh, also the certification system and uh, is uh, now online and anybody can uh, see their certification information. And uh, also we are uh, trying to prepare some mobile applications for uh, improved access to uh, online material and other resources. Uh, I think uh, with that, uh, we encourage our training providers to build a digital platforms uh, to increase the access to the students and especially for disabled. Uh, how uh, we, we have recently introduced uh, the reasonable adjustments for disabled students uh, and how we encourage them to uh, study at their homes with digital content and uh, the assessment, online knowledge assessment as well. So we have uh, introduced so many things and uh, there are a lot of things need to be uh, improved in future as well. And I see there's a, a lot of developments and a lot of people are interested in digitizing the, the Tibet or the skill-based education. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. I particularly like the, how inclusive it is in terms of not just comprehensive, but inclusive in terms of the different learning needs. So thank you very much, Dr. Janaka. Um, Professor Dr. Raha. Okay. I think um, in, in uh, perhaps three main points here is um, to ensure the key success factors in uh, for introducing digital learning in TVET. One is uh, preparation or preparedness of the uh, the students, uh, the teachers, there must be training and also the administrative uh, function, whereby there must be a bravery or a positive outlook in terms of adapting or using the available apps. Uh, how do you manage virtual reality, augmented reality, even using simulations to teach students, not only for the uh, just now the one of the participants mentioned medical students, even for the engineering students and the technology students. Uh, we are also uh, and bound, bound by the professional bodies of our countries, I'm sure. So there are things that we have to balance. Second is that the availability of networks. I think this is something that is very, very important that I have mentioned earlier, but I feel that I need to reiterate the fact that um, the networks availability. So in Malaysia, it's something that uh, we are quite lucky that the government or at least the Ministry of Higher Education uh, plus other minist relevant ministries are also looking at how uh, we can make um, uh, network networks available to the students and to the higher uh, institutions of learning. Um, the government even actually give free <laughs> free data <laughs> for the students. Uh, so, so you know, but again, um, free data is useless if the utilization does not meet the requirements. So I think um, that's one. And then acceptance, of course. Uh, holistically, students, um, private, public partnerships, the, prepar uh, the preparedness, adaptability to facilities and uh, allowing the incorporation of new technologies there must be a blurring of distinction between formal and informal learning, you know, inclusion of technologies that do not really require literacy, perhaps, you know, um, teacher and manager training to maximize the use of new technology and adaptation of teaching materials, uh, blended learning and things. So these are the acceptance and the adaptation uh, to things uh, that are here with us now. Um, it is not something that is going to be in five years time. It's not going to be, you know, next year, it's here now. So I have, I'm, I'm leaving you with a quote by Kathleen A. Sutton. When you can't have what you want, it is time to start wanting what you have. Perhaps that is something that, <laughs> that we, uh, you know, to remind ourselves as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Raha. 
Um, last but not least, we have the one minute from uh, Dr. Corrado. Are you here? Probably not. So um, in light of that, um, at, at this point, I want to say, I hope you have enjoyed today's Supply HG Exchange. Hello. On, hello, are you there? I, I, I still, yeah. Can you repeat the question? Uh, we, we, I have invited each speaker to make a final comment in one minute. So okay. your last okay. comment, thoughts, so, last word. Okay, I would like to reiterate my statement. Uh, can you hear? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, we, we can. can. We can hear you. Okay. So uh, as of now, or the Philippines has a limited policy focus on digital, technical, vocational education training and skills development. And with that, I think uh, the government uh, has to prepare uh, uh, and improve those policies uh, relevant to the deployment of digital Tibetan skills development. Well, COVID-19 has accelerated uh, the use of digital innovation in all schools in the country. And it has really facilitated uh, the improvement of the processes uh, using technology in all schools from technical, vocational, even up to the graduate programs. So now there is uh, institutional management uh, innovation and improvement of basic in infrastructure, uh, such as electricity, broadband and equipment, and even training of teachers uh, are now transforming the institution through a culture of innovation. And the most important point is we have created the industry advisory board in which we, we have established partnerships with industries to respond to demands for digitization or the online learning. So with that, even after the pandemic, this uh, online learning will continue as part of a very important element of internationalization. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's time to put our hands together for our yeah. incredible <laughs> esteemed panel members. Um, I've learned so much tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Janaka, Dr. Shayama, Professor Dr. Raha, and also Dr. Corrado, and obviously to Mendy's team, um, Mendy, Simon, Peter, and all of you from all corners of the world. Um, I'll see you tomorrow on the second part of the Apply HG Exchange Professional Education. And tomorrow we're going to look at it from a practitioner perspective. Off to you, Mendy. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Well, thanks again to our speakers and of course, Winnie, our moderator, for facilitating such an insightful discussion. It has been a pleasure and a great privilege to listen to all of you. Thanks also to Education Insight UK for giving us on this very special Applied AG Exchange event. But do not worry, the show is not quite over yet. Tomorrow, we will have the practitioner perspective, part two of the Applied AG Professional Higher Education webinar with speakers from Thailand, Kenya, Singapore, Indonesia, and Germany. Mrs. Winnie Ely will be our moderator again. Thank you, Winnie. If you haven't already done so, do register via our website, appliedag.com backslash webinars. Our other regular event, Squaring the Circle Debate, is scheduled for next month on Wednesday, 7th of October at 9 p.m. Singapore time. Next month's debate motion is so-called soft skills are more crucial than subject knowledge. So be sure to join our speakers, Ramatu, Anil, Grace, and Don, and debate master Kevin Downing on Wednesday, 7th October at 9 p.m. Singapore time. In fact, there is a Squaring the Circle debate every first Wednesday of the month for the rest of this year. So please mark your diaries. Another of our regular series, the Fireside Chat, is held on every third Wednesday of the month with the next edition, Session 5, scheduled on 21st October at 9 p.m. Singapore time. The topic of Session 5 is Recruiting and Mentoring Minority Pioneers. 
supported by Education Insight and Hasanuddin University of Indonesia, the Fireside Chats are a discussion-focused webinar series that bring a globally diverse group of experts to weigh in on an important current topic. Mrs. Winnie Ely is once again our moderator for the Fireside Chat series of webinars, and we have four very distinguished speakers from the UK, Malaysia, the United States, and Hong Kong to provide that global perspective. This slide shows you the future dates for our series of web, uh, fireside chat, and it will go on to the end of the year. In the meantime, do check out our Applied AG Extra Extra News website, where you can submit your institution's news and press releases. We're pleased to announce that Applied AG Extra Extra News is now indexed by Google News. This means our readership is growing rapidly and we can now truly promote you on the global stage and at no charge at all. This is great news for both readers and institutions who publish news via the Applied HE online news platforms. Also do take a look at our Applied HE job ready rating, which I mentioned at the start of this webinar. This new rating system emphasizes teaching and learning, graduate skills, employability, and interaction with industry. The rating is also non-prescriptive and can be applied to different types of institutions across different sectors, from full-fledged research universities to specialized institutions. Please drop us a line if you would like to learn more about the job ready ratings and how it can translate into affordable strategies for global branding and marketing. We're also in the process of launching a pilot to evaluate English as a medium of instruction whereby we measure the quality and depth of an institution's English language programs, especially for institutions from non-English speaking countries, which offer English language degree programs, the Applied HE EMI Ready Rating can be a useful internal benchmarking tool and a great marketing tool for the recruitment of international students. Do reach out to us if you would like to join the pilot, it's free, and we still have some open places for certain countries. And finally, I'm pleased to announce that we will be launching Applied HE's own social media platform called Applied HE Future on the 1st of January of next year. A trusted social media inspired platform that connects everyone from high school to professional career to lifelong learning for the three E's, education, employment, and everything in between. So watch out for our pre-launch emailers, which we will be sending out next month. And last but not least, as you know, we are the new kid on the block and we're very grateful for all the support that we could get, which is why I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge once again, all our very supportive webinar partners, City University of Hong Kong, Universitas Erlanga of Indonesia, Universitas Hassanuddin of Indonesia, the University of Lahore of Pakistan, Chinese Culture University of Taiwan, Changchung Christian University of Taiwan, Pearl Academy of India, JL Education Consultants, and Education Insight UK. Thank you very much for the great support you have given to Applied HE. All right, thanks very much, everyone. We will see you tomorrow for part two, the practitioner perspective, same time, same place. See you there. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. Goodbye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. bye.